All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So Zach Rosenblatt of The Athletic just dropped a really, really in-depth piece, pretty much encapsulating the entire Mike LaFleur, Zach Wilson, and Robert Sala uh, era as a trio over the last two years, taking us back all the way to draft day, okay? So there's some, there's some eye-opening stuff. And I'll leave the article linked down below in the description box. I highly, highly recommend checking it out. Um, it, it was just just an awesome article like the, the curtain was pulled back and you know the first thing I kind of want to bring up here is the fact that Mike LaFleur according to you know the article Mike LaFleur was actually never really that high on Zach Wilson uh in the first place let me actually read off a couple of the uh, quotes here uh, as a rookie Zach Wilson struggled with the complexity of the scheme and went three and ten as a starter over the offseason LaFleur and quarterbacks coach Rob Calabrese studied what worked for Wilson in 2021 and what didn't personally I think that's the right move I, I think that's the obvious smart decision as a staff uh, but he goes on to say, there was some level of frustration. LaFleur would tell people how much more effective the offense looked with quarterbacks Flacco, Josh Johnson, and especially Mike White. The stats backed it up. Here's another one. But Wilson was the Jets' future. So LaFleur adjusted the scheme, reduced the volume of plays, and tried to make things more digestible. Wilson seemed to have a better handle on the offense in OTAs and went into the rest of the offseason committed to building chemistry with his wide receivers. Now, you know, what's crazy about this whole thing was like, I felt from Joe Doug from top down, right? So Joe Douglas, down to Sala, down to the staff, down to the personnel. Everybody was on the same page. Everybody fit the culture. Everybody fit the system. Everybody kind of had the all gas, no break mentality that Robert Sala, you know, preaches all the time. And it was going to be a seamless marriage. And obviously, you know, look, the play, like there's great, um, uh, great players in the league that don't fit specific systems. But at the end of the day, it's just a little disappointing to hear that there was this major disconnect right out of the gate between you know offensive coordinator slash play caller slash the person intended to develop the rookie quarterback who was drafted second overall it wasn't like you know LaFleur was dealing with a fifth round pick here uh or sixth round pick where it's just like hey you know hopefully we could get something out of him no this is the guy that is supposed to be the franchise quarterback the guy that is supposed to help turn this thing around and r again right out of the gate there's this there's this problem this disconnect to me <sighs> Man, I feel like, well, from Zach Wilson's perspective, you know, if he's just not capable as a quarterback, that's just a problem in and of itself. But when we look at the Jets organization, when we look at Mike LaFleur, um, it goes back to what a lot of you guys were saying at the time, which was the Jets needed a veteran mind in the coaching room. The Jets needed maybe a veteran backup quarterback in the locker room, uh, specifically during Wilson's rookie season when you look at the quarterbacks on the roster and it was guys like James Morgan and Mike White who at the time hadn't played in a in a regular season game. So it, it's unfortunate to kind of look back um, now, you know, a couple years later and say the whole thing was botched um, and it just didn't really work out. Um, man, it, it, it's disappointing. It's disappointing, man. It, it really is. He actually goes on to bring up an interesting point about Elijah Moore. Supposedly Moore told uh, LaFleur to go F himself and um, that he sucked. That was the reason why he got sent home in the practice in October. And as we all know, the trade request came shortly after. But Rosenblatt went on to make a really fascinating point when he said multiple people in the organization pushed back on the narrative that Johnson forced Salah to fire LaFleur. Though Salah likely did feel pressure from above to make changes, for weeks, Salah defended LaFleur insisting publicly and privately that the problems were not one person's fault. And, you know, again, it just goes back to the disconnect between quarterback and OC. And, I mean, I, I can't, I, I'd be lying if I said, you know, if I told you I, I wasn't frustrated. But, you know what? It's in the past. It is what it is. Hopefully, Elijah Moore connects with the new offensive coordinator that's you know brought in. But I'm focused on the future. I am focused on the future. And to me, when like if you want to take a positive uh, you know viewpoint or a pos if you want to make a positive spin out of it, 
positive spin on the 2022 season, you could say that, hey, we're dealing with this problem. We're dealing with injuries. We lost star players and AVT and Brees Hall, um, multiple guys playing the quarterback position, constant uh, rotation on the offensive line, just no consistency whatsoever with play calling and game planning. And the Jets still managed to walk away with seven wins. So you would assume that after another free agency cycle, making a change with the offensive coordinator, factoring in another draft into the mix, adding potentially a, you know, a veteran franchise quarterback, whether that's, you know, a Derek Carr, Lamar Jack, whoever it may be, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, you would assume that the Jets would build and continue to ascend from a four-win team to a seven-win team. Now, who knows? Maybe a nine-win team, a 10-win team, an 11-win team. So we'll see how it plays out. Personally, though, I'm focused on the future. That's my that it's all I'm thinking about, right? What's the future quarterback, OC, play caller, what's going on, the rest of the staff, O-line coach, wide receivers coach, let's get this thing figured out. Let's get this thing figured out and iron out the problems before the season actually starts, which, um, you know, if you get, look, I don't, going into 2023, I don't want to have these types of problems within the locker room with, you know, between players and the coaching staff, not at all. So they got to make sure that this OC hire is, um, you know, they hit it out of the park. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.